glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, can we turn our Bibles to Romans, Proverbs chapter 20? So, throughout this month, we have been talking about the Holy Spirit, and specifically, we have been talking about the leading of the Holy Spirit. So, we're going to talk about that further. And someone says, why is it important for us to talk about the leading of the Holy Spirit? It is important for us as Christians. I said this earlier on. I said, apart from getting born again, I think the one of the other big decisions you must know as a Christian is how to hear the voice of the Lord. How to hear the voice of the Lord would help you in several ways. Number one, hearing the voice of God would prevent you from danger. That's the first thing. Number two, hearing the voice of God will um, help you access victory. I'll give an example. God had led Elijah to the brook chariot because there was a famine. But as after some time, because there was no rain, the brook began to dry up. And as the brook dried up, God told him, arise and go to where? To go to Zarephath. There's a widow at Zarephath. Some people are at the last instruction of God. They are not in the current instruction of God. You understand what I'm talking about? Some part of the last instruction. So, they go to their business and the brook is drying up and they do not realize that the next provision will not come from this brook. The next provision is in Zarephath. So they keep working at it. They keep working at it. They keep working at it, not realizing that God's provision is in Zarephath. Some people are single people and they are trying to make a relationship work. Meanwhile, by God's divine purpose and destiny, that relationship is meant to dry up so that something else can open there. My prayer for you is this. You will not invest energy in where God has left. Amen. My prayer is that you'll be able to sense God's pattern for your life and be able to invest in those areas in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. So one of the reasons why it's really important to discern God's leading is that God has a plan for every life. God wants everyone to pursue that plan. But the thing is this, without following God's guidance, you may not be able to really access God's plan for your life. So let's turn to Proverbs chapter 20 as we start this teaching, recognizing spiritual guidance. All right, so Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20. Verse 27. The Bible says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. So let's start simply by saying something very simple. Firstly, when someone dies, what is in the casket? Is that the person? Yes or no? Talk to me. Yes or no? When someone dies, what is in the casket? Is that the person? Yes or no? No. Because that is the body of the person. The person is living in another reality. So the body is dead, but the person is living in another reality. So what does that mean? The human body is not the person. Man is a spirit. He has a body and he has what? A soul. So what we call death is that this body stops to function, but the spirit begins to exist somewhere else. So Proverbs chapter 20 verse 27. The Bible says this in verse 27. It says, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Hey, you know what that means? It says, the spirit of man is God's contact point. The spirit of man is how God would relate to you. So God does not relate to you through your senses. God relates to you through your spirit. That's God's primary way of relating to you. And that was why, watch this now, watch this now. 
That's it. Will you receive this? Let me go back to our teaching of sotheology. In our teaching of sotheology, I told you, I said, it was only when man fell that we heard the conversation between man and God. Before man fell, you never heard a conversation between God and man. You will only hear part of it. But when man fell, God stopped communicating to his spirit because he was literally dead. He was now perceiving and relating to God through the senses. For example, the Bible says that God will bring the animals for man to name them. What we see is man doing what God wants. We don't see like a conversation. But don't let's go, I mean, let's just leave that, you know, let's just leave that the way it is. So the Bible says the spirit of the man is a kind of the Lord. So the spirit of man is the way you contact. It's the way God contacts you. God does not contact you primarily through your senses. He doesn't contact you primarily through your words. He contacts you primarily through the spirit. Through the spirit. So let me give you an example. Um, if you want to change a channel on television, what do you use? Yeah. Why? The remote is a primary way for you what? To flip channels. God says, if I want to can't touch you, the way I will contact you is what? Through what? Your spirit. So, how does God contact us? No, talk to me. How does God contact us? So, say God contacts me. God leads me by the spirit in me. So watch this now. So when we talk about the leading of the Holy Spirit, God will also lead us primarily by the Spirit. So God does not lead us by our eyes. He doesn't lead us by our ears. God leads us primarily by the Spirit. So let's read, it, let's read it again. Verse 27. The Bible says this in verse 27. The Spirit of man is the contact point or the Spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. And it tells what it's doing, searching all the inward parts of the belly. So we've said in our teaching earlier on that spiritual guidance always puts us at an advantage. And I give you a story. There's this story about, um, you know, one of my pastors was sharing with us about, um, let me just find out, um, media. I'm not seeing the slides on. I'm, I'm thinking that we should have it on because I've said something that should be up already. So, there's this story about when dollar to Naira was about 520. They were in a prayer meeting and the person heard the voice of God. And the voice of God said, the dollar today is 520. In the next one month, the dollar is going to crash. And he said in that prayer meeting, anyone that has dollars should go and sell up his dollar. And of course, some people had dollars they had, they had kept. And because they believed the word of God, what happened? They went to sell up their dollars. A month after, the dollar moved from 520 to about 420. See, the spiritual guidance always puts us at an advantage. There was a lady that was going meant to get married, and this guy is perfect, was doing well, spiritual, everything. So as he was going to get married, she felt a restraint in her spirit and say, don't marry him. And, you know, pressing further, God said, don't marry him, only for the day to discover that the guy got married to somebody else and died two years into the marriage. And when he died, God said, I know he's going to make choices that will lead to early death. And I was trying to prevent you from it. And that's why I said, don't marry him. You know why the leading of the Holy Spirit is important? Because sometimes the choice is not good and better. It's not good and bad. It's good and better. Good and better is one of the most complex choices in this world. Amen? I'm telling the truth. Because even when you stick with good, it's good enough. But it can actually be better. Nobody can tell you that the guy you want to marry will die early. Nobody knows that much. Nobody knows that much that that lady, you know, is going to have an incredible disease. Nobody knows that much. But with the leading of the Holy Spirit, you can, my goodness, go another level. So spiritual guidance will always put us at an advantage. And the next thing is this. Leading is a part of our inheritance in Christ. What does that mean? The moment you got born again, one of the things that came with salvation is spiritual leading or spiritual guidance. So, it's not something you work for. It's something that came with salvation. Ezekiel 36 verse 27 says, I will put my spirit within you and it will cause you. Of course, 
under one of the derivatives of the word cost means it will prompt you. He will guide you. He will lead you. He will direct you. He will do something to you. There's going to be some form of leadership in the, because the Holy Spirit is inside of you. Leading is one of the things we have today. Listen to me. If you are not led as a Christian, you will get into trouble often. We live in a dark world. We live in a world that is operated by demonic spirits. We live in a world where we need wisdom more than our own wisdom. And that wisdom is available in the leading of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Oh. I remember that um, some time ago, I invested money into something. And this, the scheme I invested money into would give us 10% back every, every month. It was a while ago. Some of you are aware of that scheme. It would give us 10%, 10%, 10% every month. And I remember that one day I was praying and the Spirit of God spoke to me and said that you've enjoyed it enough. And I, I did it for one year. That means I've made both capital and profit. The cycle is complete. He said, you've enjoyed it long enough. Pull out the funds. And I went there and the guy that was leading it was someone I knew. I said, I'm going to pull it out. He said, ah. Oh. He said, why do you want to pull it out? He said, are you scared? I said, I'm not scared. I just feel as if I've done enough. I put it out. Three months after that time, it couldn't pay anybody, both interest and capital. Spiritual guidance always puts you at an advantage. Spiritual guidance always puts you at an advantage. Glory to God. So let's read Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48. Verse 17. The Bible says this in verse 17. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to what? Prophet. And which leadeth thee by the what? That should go. Watch this. Let, let me look at I want us to read together. Let's say it together. One to go. Which leadeth to prophet? Which leadeth thee what? Let me, let me give you a good illustration. Let me, let me take a good example here. Um, let, let me see. Brother Laomi, will you come please? Yeah. I want to watch this, this illustration. So here is Brother Laomi over here. He runs a restaurant. And they make sales between... 200,000 and 1 million every day. I mean, that, it's a, that's an average good restaurant. So I'm a banker. I bank with um, Providence Bank. I come to meet him and I say that, Sir, if you will allow me, this is what I'm saying to him, if you will allow me, I want to pick up money every day so that you don't have to come to the bank. And he says, I allow you. Do you know that once we have the agreement, Either his sales is 20,000 or there's no sales. I will go every day to pick up cash. Yes or no? So once we have that agreement, it's not up to him again. It's up to me because I'm the one that committed to myself and say every day I'll come and what? Pick up cash. Is that not true? So the day that he doesn't make money, I will get there and there'll be what? No cash. But I've committed myself that I'm going to what? Come and what? Pick up cash. The day it makes one million, I'll go there and what? Pick up cash. The may it makes 10,000 there. I'll go there and what? Pick up cash. Now watch this verse. Go back to the verse. Watch what it says. See what it says. He says, I am the Lord your God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leads you by the way you ought to go. You know what God is saying? God is saying, I'm the one that is going to lead you irrespective of you. Either you look for leading or not, I lead you. It's something, see, I'm not waiting for you. See, the way guidance work with God is this. He's not waiting for you to ask him for leading. He's not waiting for you to pray. In respect of what you do or what you do not do, God says, I am the one that leads you in the way that you should go. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. You know what that means? Spiritual leading is not dependent on you. It's totally dependent on God. Powerful. Guided. See, someone says, um, why have you not heard the voice of God? I've not been praying enough. Nonsense. 
Saul said, because I sinned. Nonsense. You know, God is the one that made a personal promise. He says, I am the Lord your God. I will lead you irrespective of you. I will lead you irrespective of you pay attention, you don't pay attention, irrespective of whether you pray or you don't pray, irrespective of church attendance. He says, I lead you in the way that you have to go. Oh my goodness, you know what that means? As you are here, you are being led. You know what that means? I don't go to God asking God, lead me. No, sir. He has led me already. I'm saying, Lord, help me discover how you have led me. Glory to God. So I says, and this is a challenge I have. Sometimes, hey, brother asks a sister, do you, I, I would like to marry you. What do you think about us dating? The sister says, let's take time to pray. And she's praying for six months. You say, what? And you say, I'm still praying. Oh, I don't want to make a mistake. Listen, brother, pack a little move on. Amen. She will never hear God. You know why? Because before you ask, God has led her. See, it's not when you are there that God says, let me now lead you. You don't understand. He says, some, of you almost make, some of you make it look like this, guardians. God, God will go and think about it. Say, God, what should I do? Should I walk here or walk here? God, God does hmm. 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 This is deep. This is deep. Mm. Let me go and think about it. And you now come back after one month. God, how far? God said, hmm. What you ask is a very big thing. I'm still working on it. Don't you understand <laughs> that God knows everything? So before you ask, he has answered you. See what he says. He says, I will lead you in the way you should go. That means that even before you make up your mind, God has led you. Watch this. So the challenge is this. We are not to try to, we are not to ask God to lead us. What our challenge is, is to discover how God is leading us. Say, I'm led of God. Say with me, say, I'm led of God. Amen. Listen. Some of you, look up here, everybody. Some of you, the problem you are in right now, the challenge you are in right now, it's only God's leading that can bring you out. But you have not paid attention to it. And I'm, see, when you enter problems that you have prayed a lot about and you can't see a way out, what you need is guidance. You know why? Sometimes you are fighting what cannot be fought. Sometimes what you are fighting is not what your problem is. You just find out. I do this best, it doesn't work. I do that, it doesn't work. I do that, it doesn't work. I try to marry, it doesn't work. I try to move my boy, it doesn't work. What's the problem? You applied for visa. They refuse the UK visa, US visa. Even you applied for Congo visa. They refuse you Congo visa. And all these visa you're applying for, you will fast and pray and bind the devil. It should occur to you that maybe I'm binding the wrong person. Glory to God. It shall occur to you. When Joshua led Israel to battle and they beat Israel and they won them in battle, Joshua went back home. He said, God, what happened? There are some battles when you lose. Before you fight again, you go back and say, Lord, what happened? And leading is such that God is leading you in respective of you. God is leading you what? In respective of you. So let's go ahead. The problem with leading isn't that God, it, it, the problem with leading is not in God leading us, but it is our ability to recognize God's leading or guidance. Our responsibility as Christians is to recognize God's leading. God's leading will always bring about peace and assurance not fear and confusion. Take note of that. God's leading will always bring about what? Peace and assurance, not what? Fear and confusion. So you go and see a prophet. Hey, hi, my daughter. Ah, kurima, 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 kurima. Ah, be careful, my daughter. Ah, when you say be careful, you say, ah, Baba, what? You say, what I'm seeing? Ah, mm, mm. I can't say what I'm seeing, but be careful. My brother, that's not a prophet. The, the reason is simple. God's prophecy brings us assurance, not fear. 
God's prophecy, when you need that kind of prophet, you are in confusion. Hey, what has he seen? Is it my husband? Hey, is it my child? Is it my enemy? You, you, you're asking yourself what to say. Do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says God is not the author of what? Confusion. So, whatever leading brings you com- confusion, it's not of God. God's leading will bring you what? Assurance. It will bring you peace within. How do you know God is leading you? Is it bringing you assurance? Is it bringing you peace? If it's bringing you confusion, that's not God's leading. Glory to God. So, why? So, watch this now. We said that spiritual guidance may not be received. Why is it that sometimes spiritual guidance is not received? Because someone says, well, you say God leads us, but I cannot say categorically that God has led me before. The reason why is that although you have spiritual guidance, spiritual guidance may be lost, may, be, may not be received. Number one, what happens? Why is spiritual guidance not received? Number one, because spiritual guidance can be missed. Spiritual guidance can what? Be missed. So it's possible for God to lead you and you miss it. You didn't even know God spoke to you. Someone says, is that possible? Isaiah says this. He says, who is blind as my prophet, see many things and does not see? Who is deaf as my messengers, hearing many things and does not hear? God says, you know what that means? God says, I've shown him many things, but he's not seeing what I'm showing him. God says, I'm telling him many things, but he's not hearing what I'm telling him. Spiritual guidance can be mixed. Let me give you a good example. Samuel. The Lord called Samuel three times, and every time God called Samuel, he ran to who? Eli. He was actually missing every spiritual guidance. Some of you, God speaks to you and you say, and something said to me, and you don't realize that that's God. It's only when that thing has passed, you now say, oh my God. So it was actually God that spoke to me. So one, spiritual guidance can be missed. The second thing is this. Spiritual guidance can be ignored. Why don't I receive spiritual guidance? One, it can be missed. Two, it can be ignored. How can it be ignored? When someone eventually heard from the Lord, God told him, God gave him a message to Eli. You know what happened to Eli? Eli was warned about God's judgment on his house and his children, and Eli heard the message and did nothing about it. Eli heard the message and what? Did nothing about it. He had spiritual signals, but he ignored it. So the question, this is, um, this is to, for today. How, um, why don't we recognize spiritual leading? Why don't we recognize spiritual leading? Number one is this. Spiritual leading is going to come by faith. Spiritual leading is going to come by faith. Hebrews 4.2. All of God's gifts are received by faith, including spiritual guidance. Watch this. What does, what does that mean? Once you don't believe that God can speak to you, you will not be able to recognize God's voice. In Christ Jesus, all that we have is by faith. All that we are given is by faith. So the question this morning is this. Do you believe that God can speak to you? If you believe that you need a prophet to hear the voice of God... God will not speak to you. No, I'm, that's the wrong way to say it. You will not hear the voice of God because you don't believe that you don't need the prophet. The second thing is this. Why, why, don't, why don't we, what do they call it, receive spiritual guidance? Because many of us are desiring the spectacular. So let's open to 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11. And he said, Go forth and stand before the mount, before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and it, watch this now. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. The Bible says that Elijah was there to stand before God. And the Lord came as it was coming. The rocks were cracking. Pra, 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 pra. There was doing go, go, go. But the Bible says the Lord was not, not in it. So there can be noise and God will not be in it. 
In fact, many of you think that once someone prophesies, he's a man of God. Is it not true? If his prophecy comes to pass, he's a man of God. Listen to me. In Act of the Apostle, a young girl was prophesying. She saw, she saw what they call it. She saw Paul. And without knowing Paul, he pointed at Paul and said, This is a man of God, man of the Most High God. And when Paul heard it, Paul said, The message was correct, but the source was demonic. The message was correct, but the source was what? Demonic. Paul said, demon, come out of her. Can demons tell you things? Of course they can. Not like tell you things. I mean, demons can use people to bring forth prophecy, lying prophecy. They can use demons to do that. Those are what we call activities of familiar spirit. Someone say, what are familiar spirit? Familiar spirits are demon spirits that are familiar. Praise the Lord. <laughs> How are they familiar? They know your name. They know where you go to. They know the kind of person you like. They know what you like to do. So, there are demons that associate with you very often. They, are, they, they know you very well. So, they are called family. You see, listen, in the Bible, the activities of demons is what they used to call them. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, they call a demon a spirit of infirmity. Why are they calling him that? Because the activity of the demon is to bring about sickness. They call him a lying spirit. What? He lies. So, they, so, I'm just giving you how we come about familiar spirits. So, the Bible also calls somewhat familiar spirits. What's familiar? A demon that's familiar. So, when you come, he will just say, mm, You know, if he wants to speak in tongues, you know, sometimes they speak in tongues also. So, when he speaks in tongues, stand up. He says, ah, you like a girl. He knows because he sees you when you follow the girl all around. He's very familiar with you. So from that source, it will feed other people. I'm only saying this to let you know that not everyone that prophesies and says the right thing is a man of God. Paul went somewhere and the lady said, this is a man of God. This is a message. He was so, she was so spot on. But Paul looked at her and as he looked at her, the gift of the spirit, the sending of the spirit entered into operation. He said, no, what she said is right. What she said by a demonic spirit, come out of her. And guess what? I said this to you. A prophet of God can make a mistake. A prophet can tell you that tomorrow there will be danger and danger will not happen. And the fact that his prophecy did not come to pass does not make him what? A false prophet. Is it not true? First Corinthians 14. Don't just agree. Where is it in the Bible? Ah. Because that's how you go online now. They say someone else. Say, it's true. It's true. It's true. Where is it in the Bible? Well, before you agree, ask your neighbor, where is it in the Bible? Praise the Lord. It can make sense, but can we get some scriptures to prove it? 1 Corinthians 14, verse 29. See what the Bible says. Can a true prophet prophesy and he will get it wrong? Let's see. He will get it. Sometimes it's possible because firstly, he's human. Whatever passes through a human vessel is subject to human frailties. But let's look, let's look here. See what the Bible says. Let the prophet speak two or what? No, talk to me. Two or what? Three. No, that's not. Those at the back, I can't hear you. Two or what? Three. Those in the stream, I can't hear you. Let's say it together. Two or what? Three. All right. It says, let the prophet speak two or three and let what? The other judge. What does judge mean? The word judge means examine. How do you examine what they are saying if there's no tendency or capacity for them to be wrong? The only reason why you'll be asked to judge or to examine it is because they can say something that is off key. So when he says off key something, the prophet says now will not carry bell and you'll say, bagan, bagan, bagan. Part one was okay, part two was nonsense. Go and sit down. So many of you that cannot hear the voice of God, you will now go and see one baba and say, Baba, and they tell you something. The first part is okay, the second part is nonsense. But because you are not trained to hear the voice of God, you say, hey, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And what he has said to you is nonsense. So I went to see one man. He said, hey, rama, 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 rama. He said, ah, I see you want to lose your job. He said, Baba, I have no job. <laughs> what, what did that guy say? Jampa. Jampa. What? Jampa. Jampa. <laughs> Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. So let's let's keep reading. Verse verse eleven. And it was so when and it was so when Elijah heard it. Um, we're in verse twelve. The Bible says, verse eleven. Let's just go and go forth, stand upon the Lord upon the mount, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and broke in pieces of rocks before the Lord. And the Lord was not in the wind. There was wind, but the Lord was not in the wind. And the Bible says, and after the wind, there was an earthquake. There was ha, ba, 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 ba. the Bible says there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. Noise does not mean God's presence. Noise does not mean God's presence. Drama does not mean God's approval. Glory to God. Hey, 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 hey. You can do it, hey, hey, hey. and God is not there. Because some of you, if God wants to talk to you, it has to be dramatic. If you don't see some African magic elements, you must, you know, it must look like a movie. God cannot just talk to you. Listen, this is your father. He's not a music director. <laughs> Glory to God. See what the Bible says next. The Bible says, and God was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire. See, there was a fire. Whoa! So I was like, hey, Jesus. But there was not, nothing in the fire. The Bible says, but after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it, my goodness, he wrapped his face in the mantle and went out. But why did he do that? Because God was in it. He now heard a still small voice. Hello. Still small, tiny, you could miss it voice. God was not in the drama. God was in a still, small voice. You know why you don't recognize God's voice? You are waiting for drama. Meanwhile, God is in that still, small voice. Say it in your heart. Don't. Do. Go. Don't go. But that's not enough. The kind of voice you want is the one that does African magic. Ha! I am the Lord! You know, that kind of voice. See, this is why most of us do not recognize the leading of God. You know why? We are looking for the spectacular. And when you look for the spectacular, you lose the supernatural. <laughs> Glory to God. You come for a service like this, I will pray for you. This week, receive promotions. Someone say, I die. Someone say, that, that's not for me. You know the one you're waiting for? Huh? Makipa Lika Pako. Whose phone number is 070 <laughs> 44? As they drive them, they say, they'll say, Ah, he's my pastor. He said, Yes, your wife's name, I see. I see. She has plated air like this. Who is Ngozi? He says, My wife. Ah, he said, Hmm, who is if I? He says, My son. Ah, he said, Who is the Bagani? He says, My mother. Ah, I want to ask you, you know, say, God meant me today. I want to ask you, even. The Jesus that you serve, how many people do you call people's names? All those things, are they bigger than your Bible? Can't you just receive by faith? If you call my name, good. If you don't call my name, good. The reason why is that I believe the word of God. These are many people missing service. They want the pastor to touch them. Must they touch you? If he doesn't touch you, why can't you touch, touch God? Wouldn't to touch your pastor or God? See, if pastor cannot touch me, that's the proof that God will touch me. Because pastor is limited in how much you can touch. Prophet might not touch everybody, but our God is unlimited. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. I said glory to God. Yeah. See, you're, you're waiting for drama. For example now, Many of you, by now, you should be seven in church. And every time you say, join the workforce, you will hear the voice say, and you should join. No, 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 you're not joining. But it's one day that something happens to your child. So now bring a prophecy. I've been saying you should serve me before. You didn't serve me. That's why the child is sick. Like they say, Lord, oh Lord, Lord, I didn't know you were talking to me. See, why are you that way? What is wrong with you? You are a child of God. Can't your father just talk to you? See, when my father was alive, all he just had to call my, was my name and I would respond. He didn't have to be dramatic. 
How many of you does the father come to your house and say, Shinene? Oh, 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 who is it, Shinene? I have your father that gave birth to you. <laughs> one time, one, 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 <laughs> one lady, you see, I'm not sure they do a man, went to a mountain to pray because he went to find out who to marry. So after a long time, show me, show me, show me, show me. Ah, the mountain guardian saw it was going to, was now walking around. Show me, show me. Show, ah, he said, show you what? Said, show you what? The lady just answered next, whom I will marry, whom I will marry. Because in her mind, she thought it was the voice of God. The man said, you better open your eyes before you see a man without it. <laughs> see, why do people, don't people recognize this? Let me tell you. You need to realize something. You are already hearing the voice of God. Some say, how do I know? I'll give you a simple example. When you read your Bible, what voice interprets the Bible to you? That's the Holy Spirit. He will guide us into all truth. The Holy Spirit is one that he, he reveals the word of God to us. He reveals the Bible to you. Say, the same way that voice reveals the Bible to you, that's the same way it guides you. For example, now, today, some of you, the Holy Ghost is asking you, join the workforce. Serve in church. Serve in church. But the point is this, there's no drama. He's just a small leading. He's just a small, and I should do that too. He's just a small, ah, that's me actually. And when that comes, if you can begin to pay attention to the voice, for example, do you know when you have a new phone, when it rings, you don't know your phone is ringing? Yes or no? So, as you have the phone for a longer time, you begin to train your phone on how to recognize the ringtone. Is that not true? So, that same voice I say that during the workforce, the more you respect it, respond to it, pay attention to it, you will know that's the voice of God. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So, let's close. Let's close. So why don't we hear the voice of God, number one? Because faith is involved. Number two, there is, people don't hear God's voice because there is this desire for supernatural leading. And we need to know something then for, for spectacular leading. Let me say something to you eh, about spectacular leading. Everybody look up here. If you see someone that sees vision a lot, stay away from them. Someone say why? Some people are seeing more visions than all the visions recorded in the whole Bible. Read from Matthew to Revelation, how many visions did they see? You can count it. It's not up to 50. One human being in his just 40 years of life, abs, every day wakes up, he sees a vision. You will pack your load and say, you see more than Christ, I'm afraid of you. <laughs> That's why they were telling you that you will soon lose your job when you have no job. And they will do you japa. <laughs> what? Japa. <laughs> oh, japa. Oh, I get it. I get it. So, why you saw that? Every day you go and see him. I see a vision. I see a vision. Japa. So the third reason why people don't hear the recognized voice of God is this. I, I spoke about last week is what I call dispositions. Well, I didn't speak here last week though. I was on the island church here. Yeah. Dispositions. What are dispositions? Let me read what they are. Dispositions are emotions. Somebody say emotions. Strong emotions based on what? Received information. Let me call someone in the choir. Who, who is married there? Okay, busy come. Yeah. What are dispositions? Strong emotions based on what? You've seen BC before. Why are you looking at her again? She's married. She's really married. You understand that? She has like one or two kids, right? You know, so you, you don't even know that. She has kids. She doesn't look, she looks like she's single. She's really married, praise the Lord. And her husband is somewhere there. Very good. <laughs> what a disposition? You see, you can't remember because you're looking at her. <laughs> what are dispositions? Strong emotion based on what? So watch this now. Um, where's what I make up? I make up come. Mm. 
So basically, just stay over there first. Let me show what I mean. But if you come to my left hand side. So, when you have this position, this is what happens. Pull me. Pull me. Don't pull me too much. I don't fall off. So, so that's too much. Just say it's a light as I can talk. I, I know you are huge, so have mercy on me. See what this position does. This position pulls you to his side. And there are strong emotions. So, if you already have strong emotion about something, it will be pulling you. It will not make you respond to God's voice or recognize it. The reason why is that a voice is a voice. Emotions are stronger than voices. This is why people don't hear the voice of God. So watch this now. Thank you, Brother Maker. I want to show you what emotions are and dispositions are. So, um, yeah, my, uh, we, are, we are both single, we are dating. So you're my girlfriend. So I'm not meant to have commit fornication. But now I've been committing with you. You know, I want to commit with you. So bibilize me. I'm also bibilizing you. Bibilize me. Oh, me. <laughs> don't you want to? I want to. Don't you want to? I want to. So as she's hugging me, watch it now. One letter fell off here. You know, and she opened it. And it says that I'm HIV positive grade 2. <laughs> See. <laughs> See, watch now. Before, she was babylizing me. <laughs> but now, if I say, oh, baby, let's continue. See, before, she was saying that, God, I can't control myself. Oh, God, I don't know. God, I don't know why this is happening. No. Ah, before, you know, that I've done it. When I've done it, I'm now regret. Oh, God. Oh, yo, God. Oh, God. You know, that kind of thing. But when she sees the paper, will she struggle? She will jump her right. What, what, what changed? Our emotion changed because you received another information. I'm showing you. What changed was, is he not saying, no, I'm born again, I should not be doing this. Ah, too late. Is that, is it not, no, you're born again. No, our emotion changed because you have received what new information. Watch this now. So this is what happens to you as a Christian. When God is, when God is speaking to you about something, once you are emotionally invested in something else, your emotions will grow in that area of information so much so that you will not be able to recognize what God is saying. Your emotions will grow in that area. So watch this. You know, thank you. So, God says that that business, don't invest in it. But because you like money, you know money? <laughs> you like money. You say, ah, God, so as you're praying, you feel a restraint. You say, no, 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 no. Why do I feel a restraint? That's the spirit of fear. See now. There's leading, oh, but you're now confusing yourself with other leadings. You say, that's the spirit of fear. No, no, God has not given the spirit of fear, but of might or sound mind. Even God should take risk. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. He said, in fact, I know what I'll do. I'll go and sow a seed. The reason why is that your emotions are so vested that you are interpreting everything in the light of those things. So, and what's the problem? They say, when you bring 20 million, after two months, you will get 40 million. They say, ah. He said, Father, I know it. So when Pastor said, I say, it's your season. He said, I knew it. That was what Pastor was talking about. Pastor was giving me a word. It's my season. Meanwhile, God was saying, don't do it. But because your emotions are invested, you will not yield. You will carry your money. So, so you, <laughs> you will carry your money and go and do it. And the reason why is this. Because your emotions are tied to it. Watch this now. Let's say that as you have made up your mind, you know God was telling you, you didn't hear you. Everything is there, it's your season. As you wanted to invest, as you were going to the bank, after God has told you, don't, you were going to the bank. You met Brother Komi. Brother Komi said, ah, uh -uh. that how far? He said, ah, you know Grace Max business. I said, that business that when you give her 10 million, she'll give you 40 million. That uh, I'm going to put money in the bank, in the, in the bank now. Brother Komi said, eh, Grace Max, she duped me last month. My own 10 million has been with her for two years now. Once he says that, will you keep going? All of a sudden, your, your God has not been giving you no fear. God has not given me all of, it will calm down. You now say that, ah, and God was telling me, oh. Ah, but but formerly you said it was something I was telling you. But see now, I'm just showing you 
that the reason you could not recognize God was this your emotions were too invested that greed for money that thing for to make it you've seen the 40 million you have seen brand new car you have seen Dubai you have seen that thing will be cloud your senses same the relationship you are saying father guide me you know what you want to do you are deceiving yourself in prayer. You even say, Pastor, I just want to, you know, Pastor, I just want to pray. I want to do the right thing. It's a lie. You know what you want to do. Because there's a way you have trained your emotions. Watch this. This was what happened to Balaam and Balak. What happened? Balaam, the, it, the, the king said, Come and curse them and they will die. As he went to pray, God says, Don't go. He said, I'm not going. They now brought gifts. Eh? When they saw money, dollars. Pounds. He said, let me go and pray again. He's going to ask God again. Does God change his mind? Why are you going to pray again? God, if God said, don't go. They went and brought more, more money. They now brought pounds, dollars. They brought, ah. When they brought that one, he said, let me go and pray. When, when, by the time he finished praying, he said, God, I should go. Listen to me. In my opinion, I didn't think God said he should go. How do I know? As he was going, an angel met him on the road and said, I want to cut your head. How can God say you should go and the angel will stop you? I believe that Balaam hid himself. When he saw the money, prophetic voices came to him by their own accord. <laughs> Glory to God. Many girls are here. When you see the guy's car and apartment and where he walks, you will just hear, this is your husband. <laughs> Glory to God. And the guy finally gives you gifts. He says, ah, assurance. 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 It's all over. Assurance. Listen to me. If it's not God's leading, that's your lifetime assurance. So that assurance is not just for now. It's for later. It's for the future. That's the last time. The reason why is this. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the, the, the end thereof is the way of destruction. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. And he shall direct your path. And he shall direct your path. Say amen somebody. Glory to God. So why don't people recognize God's leading? Because their emotions are what vested. Their emotions has a hold on them. And those emotions, that's why when you want to follow God's leading, you need to do something. Lord, not my will. And it's not what you say. Someone say, Father, not my will. Mm, it's not about tears. It's about taking your emotions and putting it in neutral. You want to know who is the will of who you should marry? Don't date any of them. Don't go out to dinner. Don't pick up their calls. Leave them for two weeks. Leave them for one month. Go and pray. When you go and pray, you will know the one that there is love inside. You hear that guy say, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's it. Some of you are, some of you say, you know, some of you not be using physical things to understand. Your emotion is vested. Canada, I go. Canada, I go. Canada, I come. Canada is it. Canada for me. There's a reason why you were born in this country. I hope you realize that. Are you a Canadian man, but have you, have you asked yourself that question before? I'm not saying you cannot travel, but before you travel, can you ask the one that planted you, can I be unplanted? But many of you say, no, 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 Pastor, why should I ask? I need I got the visa. I didn't walk too much. That visa can be a trap. Not all open doors are God's doors. I'm not saying it's wrong to travel. I'm only saying before you travel, can you please ask him why there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. The end thereof is the way of destruction. The fact that he worked for others doesn't mean work for all of us. Some of you as I'm preaching now, you say, Pastor, Hank, oh yeah. <laughs> Even if I get visa to Kotono, I'm going. <laughs> ah, this country. See, you don't understand. I'm not saying you can't go anywhere you want to go to. But can you just take one minute and say, Lord, is this your will for my life? 
Because the Bible says, those that are planted shall flourish. It's not those that move, sir. It's those that are planted. Planted means you, you don't plant yourself. You are planted somewhere. Glory to God. You don't plant yourself. You are planted somewhere. It left to me. You think I'll be a full-time pastor? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but when the call came, I'm saying, I planted you here. I'm grateful because I'm grateful I yielded to the call. I didn't want to become a full-time pastor. See, you don't understand. God is wiser than you. He's wise. You don't know how wise God is. Let me tell you how wise God is. God is so wise that the Bible says the foolishest of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. That if God says, let me do mumumud, that his mumumud is wiser than the wisest of all men. Who do you think you are? What do you think you know? How old do you think you are? See, see, you can tell me Shomo Ejimini. But let me say something. With God, you can't say God, Shomo Ejimini. You know why? God is ageless. When they thought about age, see, God says, okay, let's start making age for them. God himself is ageless. He lives from eternity to eternity. They say, Jesus Christ, who are you? He say, I am the I am. Uh-uh. What does that mean? I am. Like, like, think of whatever you can think about. I am. Before it, I am. After it, I am. I am who I am. Start and let us pray.